What's up? I think we're live, so let me know if you can hear me. Um, sorry for the one minute delay, I had to brew myself a real quick cup of coffee. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you, one moment. I want to get some paintings here that I set aside. Okay, so welcome, welcome. Thank you to anyone who's here. Today's live is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a little different. Uh, I like to do these to alternate between uh, live streams. I think the screen froze for a moment. Let me know if that's the case. Uh, but in any case, I like to alternate between some painting lives and some of these just talking and, and fun, hanging out together where I can address more questions. So one thing I will ask you is now, uh, if you can hit that like button, help some more people find the stream and get in here, uh, that would be really appreciated. Now, here's what we're going to talk about, and then I'll go to the chat and see what's up with you there. Uh, basically, what I want to do is talk about, as the title suggests, how to improve in watercolor. And I'm taking it from the angle of um, long term. Now, I just want to say the connection may be kind of wobbly because... Uh, it's a bit of a rainy day, okay? So just letting you know. Uh, thank you so much for letting me know that the audio is okay. The video may be a little slow. My apologies. Feel free to put me in the background. Uh, when I'm going to show the paintings, I'm going to let you know, and you can come to the screen and actually look at it. Thank you so much, Dave, for liking it. I really appreciate it. Ohio is always well represented, Mark. Uh, we have John here. How are you? Uh, just wanted to let you know. We have Chris. Greetings from Finland. Um, uh, greetings back to you, Chris. Um, I want to let you know that this live is going to be probably, I'll try keeping it shorter. I have a few other things later in the schedule. So we'll try to keep it to an hour, kind of airtight. So we'll finish uh, around 10. Uh, Eastern camera is shaking. That's my fault. I'm going to fix that one moment. That is totally my fault. Now it's going to be better. Um, my table is moving a little, so and my laptop's on my table. And that's what you get. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I want to talk about long-term success in watercolor, the thing, uh, the things that it takes. And also, I want to tackle this from multiple angles, kind of share my knowledge from the last seven, six to seven years of doing this. Um, I think it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I will go into some very general advice, and then we'll go into stuff that's a little more specific. So I think you'll enjoy kind of both of these. Um, 32 people in the house is what I see, so thank you so much to anyone who's here, anyone who hit the like button. Um, and now let's uh, address some of the chats. Let's see here. So we have Oliferous. I'm trying to stay up, brother, but if I fall asleep, not your fault, it's late for me. Uh, before you start, have a great time and I'll watch it uh, when I wake up. Sure, no worries, my friend. Uh, Paris D. Black, good morning. We have snow here in Columbus, Ohio, but for once I am on time. Glad to see you. Uh, great to see you. I'm so happy to see you too, Paris, and I'm jealous. I want some snow too. <laughs> but we never, never, ever get snow here. Uh, Susan V, good morning. Have a good day all. Chris P, good afternoon, everybody. I'm looking forward to Liron's live session. It's so amazing being connected with all these Liron loving people at Warms My Heart. Thank you so much. Jackie Megan, hi, Liron here from Georgia. Uh, we have Dave in the house. Uh, Dave Lowe, go check out his channel. James L. Baker, hello, all in greeting from Lockdown, London. Uh, Mark Ohio, good morning from um, Sylvania, Ohio. Uh, Paris, sound is good. Calvin says audio okay. Uh, Susan uh, can hear me. Thank you so much, Susan, for letting me know. Nancy G says good morning from Snow Covered Akron, Ohio. I loved Ruth's video. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, I think. Uh, Ruth's video was a huge adventure. Uh, we have Luca Ferrucci. Uh, hi, everyone. Greetings from, uh, is, it, is it pronounced Lucha? Double C? Uh, I don't know. Let me know if it's Luca or Lucha. Tuscany. Tuscany is beautiful. Zaid Thakur. Hi, Mark Rayo. I will represent it. John here. Evelina in the house. Um, thank you so much again, Dave, for liking the video. Um, Chris from Finland. Calvin Zero. Indeed, the camera shook a bit. Uh, Barb White. Hello. Drinking a hot caramel latte in cold snowy Ohio. Um, uh, Ucha says, hi, everyone, greeting from India, Kelvin from Malaysia, Agnes Leeming from New Jersey. Okay, so we have people from all over, which is great news. Um, so here's the thing about the Ruth video I wanted to talk about. I hope you watched it. It got fewer views, as I knew it would. It's not a painting video. It's not 
an art related video. Um, I wanted to do something like to break the routine in a while now, just to give myself the freedom to do that. Hey, David, I see you, David uh, Figs Figora. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I wanted to break routine a bit uh, with the Ruth video. It's something that I just want to do to feel more free to do these things. And the funny thing is I wasn't even planning on combining it with Ruth's birthday, but it was her birthday that Saturday. Uh, I think someone mistook it for my birthday. It was Ruth's birthday, the 12th of December. Um, I can't tell the year off the top of my head, but she's four, yeah. So I can't do math uh, live. Sorry about that. Not going to happen, even for such simple deduction. Um, so it just ended up being really funny because the video came out just as uh, her birthday came up and um, I, I collected all sorts of funny video bits for my uh, for my iPhone mainly where I have uh, all of her videos and uh, kind of compiled it into one thing I find that editing these kinds of videos is very natural for me. It's very easy for some reason It's just fun and entertaining uh, So we have we have 50 people now. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much Let's see who else joined and then we'll get into today's topic so we have someone without a name. It's just a dot says hi. So hi back. Kimberly Hilton. Hey, how are you, Kimberly? Good morning from Virginia. John says, hi, everyone. I promise to press the like button afterwards as I can't access it on my phone. Yeah, if you remove the chat, if you, uh, it should say in the options chat, then you remove it, then you have the like button. But if you can, no biggie. You can do it later. David, hey, <laughs> Kiki friend, friends and hello from Sweden. Ray Manhill from Scotland. Uh, John says, will you be doing uh, a live next week? Yep, I should be doing one. Yep, uh, unless there's something special. I don't think so. I will do one. Kyber uh, Kakar, hi from Germany. Anuj Singh, greeting from Hindustan. Uh, Kimberly, I don't think I ever had someone from Hindustan, uh, at least definitely not comment. That's really cool. Kimberly Hilton says, uh, Ruth <laughs> was so cute. Donna Bowman, good morning, Donna. Luis uh, Borges, hi from Australia. Gloria Mar Wilson, hi from hello, hi from Florida, USA. Neil Pazhar, hi Liron, and greetings to all from uh, my girlfriend's town in Ashkelon. Uh, so yeah, that's a place in Israel for anyone who doesn't know. Janky Megan, love the Ruth vid. Calvin Zero, how to paint faster? Still makes me almost, takes me almost an hour to do very small thumbnails. Uh, that's fine. That makes sense to me, you know. Uh, and by the way. Let me know your questions in the chat. I will address them uh, together with the topic of today. Uh, if it's related to watercolor, obviously that's the best, but whatever you want, really, we can do. John says the Ruth video was great off topic video. More please. John, you played a, a pretty major role in getting me to do these kinds of videos, to be honest with you. Um, you and some other people that sent me messages and comments saying you can do all these sorts of things. And I thought it would be fun, you know, once in a while, do like even a cooking video. I like cooking, so it could be fun. Uh, just for myself, like I don't care if the videos get less views. Um, oh, we have a bunch of messages coming in. Corsam, hi. Uh, S1, hi and heart. Hello to you too. Uh, we have an emoji that sends uh, gummy worms. Uh, I love gummy worms. It's, they're really bad, but I like them. Uh, Jam Lee says hello from Cincinnati, Ohio. Wow, Ohio is really represented. Uh, Renu Tika, hello from India. Ma uh, Maggie McNevin, message retracted, send it again. Sharon Stone, hi from Kenya. Betsy V, hello from Michigan. Learn a lot from, from your videos, I assume. Thank you so much. Cubs Win is in the house. Good morning from Texas. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, I, there are a lot of questions I encounter in regards to watercolor that I think we can kind of address today that many people have issues with, very common challenges and things that people just deal with uh, all the time. Uh, so that'll be great. And simultaneously, I have a pile of older paintings here to show you. And I think it could be fun to tie in actually showing you older pieces and talking about maybe the specific lessons I learned from them, stuff like that. That could be really fun to anyone who just joined in. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Don't forget to drop a like because it helps this live reach more people. Thank you so much for that. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually practicing and experimenting. And I call it, aka, the figure it out answer. A lot of the questions I get, uh, the, the answer to them ends up being, you have to figure it out. And it's, it's a funny little topic because a lot of questions refer to how do I know something like what colors will work together or what type of um, a scene to paint, what type of light and shadow conditions to do, um, how do I interpret a certain color, a certain shadow, and 
of course, there are best practices. There is a globally good advice that one can give. But for the most part, the answer to these questions is it's really subjective and it depends on your taste. And so my answer to these very often is just you have to figure it out. So I do want to make an important point right out the, out the gate of a lot of the questions will receive answers just by practicing and, and experimenting. Okay, so experiment with different things, do things differently or do things the same. By just painting the same scene, you learn a lot of new things, even if you do it multiple times, by the way. So that's kind of a common one I see of the figure it out uh, answer. So a lot of the questions ask yourself, is there really a one correct answer to this question or does it depend on experience, preference, taste? Um, I guess even the tools you use will have an effect. So if you love flat brushes, which I barely use, that's going to affect your technique. That's going to affect your approach. That's going to affect a lot of things. Um, and I want you to be able to develop that independent mindset of if you don't know something, you'll experiment and get the results, okay? Because the results will tell you the full story. Very often when someone asks me a question that the answer to is figure it out, um, what really helps that sometimes people do do is they provide a lot of examples. And then I can look at the examples and say, oh, it looks like when you're painting, you're doing, you're doing X, Y, Z. So maybe for you, the right answer is A, B, C. You get my point? So it's a very common thing, common theme to have. Uh, and, and I hate giving these answers because it's like, yeah, you just figure it out. Um, you know, do the homework, basically. Uh, but it is important to have that mindset of independence and um, really experimentation. Try something out. If you don't know what colors will work with a given color, try it out. See what happens. Um, try doing multiple different types of scenes with the same color scheme. See if it works for everything. For me, uh, I love. I usually use the same color combinations for multiple paintings, but but um, some people may find that they prefer a certain color palette for a certain scene, certain weather, mood, and that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm very simple in that regard. That's kind of the opening remark I want to give you. It's an advice that not a lot of people like. Very often, people won't enjoy hearing, but. I have to say, like you, most of the people who reach out to me and ask these questions, they get it. Like the moment I tell them that's kind of dependent on a lot of other things you have to experiment, they get it. They go and they do the experimentation. They go back to me and they tell me I did X, Y, Z and it worked that way or this way. And, and that's great. So that's most of my experience. So way to go on that. Good job. Uh, now let's see uh, what else is going on here. And if you have any questions, again, let me know. Uh, I think we stopped at Cubs win. So we have HD's Law 1. Hey, buddy. Greetings from Chicago. Piccolina. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm from Italy. Uh, so you have to tell me if that's Piccolina, if it's CCO or Picciolina. That's now, now what I'm wondering. Calvin Zero says, well, YouTube had a fried rice fed going on. Maybe make a video of your uh, hometown fried rice. That's interesting. I love fried rice. Uh, VM, you always motivate me. Uh, you've got to be one of my favorite artists out there. Seriously, what was the biggest thing to motivate you to start painting? Well, thank you so much for that. Um, it's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll try. It's a very interesting question. What was the biggest thing to motivate you to start painting? So I'm going to go a little back and and go at, start at the beginning. To me, I knew that I want to do something for myself, by myself, and be my own boss. And I kind of looked at my own skill set and I figured, okay, I'm good at teaching and I have some experience in that. Um, I've always liked drawing. And so it kind of took me in a, a certain direction. This passion for being independent and wanting to create my own thing. I didn't even think in terms of like create my own business. Just create my own thing for myself. If I ask myself initially what made me even go on that path, that'll be it, funny enough. It's a very serious kind of life decision reason of just wanting to do something for myself, which led me down the stream towards painting. Now, if you ask me what was the biggest thing that motivated me to start painting within the context of art, so I was already drawing, I was already uh, um, writing and posting videos, and then I decided to go for watercolor. To be honest with you, I think that would be through urban sketching. I started doing urban sketching just with pen. And then I started being exposed to that trend of urban sketching with watercolor. 
And um, I think that was huge because I loved the look of watercolor and how it kind of blends out and, and fades away. And you know these scenes where someone sketches like uh, line and wash, so this, the pen sketch is very nice and solid, and then the water kind of plays its role and fades out around the, the surrounding of the painting. There is really nothing there. So kind of like what you'd see Mark Tower Holmes does or many other um, do. Uh, and that look really pulled me and made me gravitate towards watercolor. And then I started getting on the Joseph Z and Alvaro Castanet train and I love their works. And that made me really want to paint kind of like them, but my own style. I hope that makes sense. That was huge. Seeing paintings that inspired me, urban sketches and paintings, and seeing the almost, it's funny to say, about the godly quality in them, because that divine light and shadow is what I like to call it sometimes. You can feel it. When something clicks, you can feel it. Um, this is why I love yellow ochre so much, because it's a paint that I always connected with that strong feeling of light and shadow in it, kind of divine light and shadow, if you will, something legendary almost. I hope that makes sense. I don't think I ever mentioned that kind of a thing before. So, uh, VM, thank you for that question. Got something different out of me today. So, thank you for that. Uh, Tarsicio Domante. Hello, dear. Many greetings from Sicily. Wow, cool. Sicily in the house. Maggie McNevin. Hi, Leron and everyone. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, USA. Sorry, I corrected your name earlier. No worries. That happens all the time. I didn't even notice. Uh, John says, thank you, Leron. Yes, I uh, would love to see you make your sambusa and pizza. Nice. You follow. Um... John, you're like my biggest uh, biggest follower. It's amazing. You, you know everything. It's so cool. Um, I love making pizza. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, thank you, John. I, I, I definitely will consider doing something like that uh, for sure. Uh, Leah's Kitchen. Hi from Tiberius. Nancy G. Homemade pizza crust. I, I just do pizza. Um, I, I'm not that good in crust. The crust is just kind of there. Uh, that's something I have to work on, like the actual folding it inside and all of that. Uh, it's a skill I've yet to acquire. Kimberly Hilton Studio says, I love being in this art community with everyone from around the world. Thanks, Iran. We're growing together. I look forward to this live stream on Thursdays now. That's so cool. Thank you, Kimberly. And I will say this. Um, I want to try starting to do some art conversations with other creators. So if you have some people that, that you think will fit the bill, uh, let me know. I'll try reaching out. Uh, maybe we can do like art conversations, art chats, uh, bring some guests over. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. It could be fun and I think it will make the community stronger. It's something I, um, it's not my go-to. It's something I have to kind of get out of my shell and uh, actively reach out to people and do that. Uh, but I'd love to try. So let me know if you'd like that. Uh, Kelvin Zero says, watercolor is mostly experimental since you can't replicate watercolor one-to-one. -one. That is so true. If you just let go and understand that you have like maybe 30% control, 40, I don't know, like you can't put a number on it. But if you understand that, then you'll let the less, the, the other 70% take over and it will really produce beautiful things. Uh, that's definitely one thing you want to understand. Uh, John says, Christmas question, how do you like to spend your Christmas day and what's your top favorite food and drink? Well, we don't really celebrate Christmas here. We will kind of do it this year just out of fun because you have to understand here, I'm Jewish. So uh, we're not, we're, we celebrate Hanukkah, but uh, there is this, we're always exposed to, uh, to I, don't, I don't know if to say Western culture because I feel like we're, we're kind of a Western country, but uh, we're always exposed to um, like US, UK, TV shows, movies, like Christmas is the culture. We, we see it everywhere. So it's something I always loved because we don't have snow here almost at all, like in some places um, and very limited time periods. Um, so it's always something I wanted to experience, you know, all of these movies of kids opening their presents in Christmas, is it evening or morning? I think morning. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, so we're going to kind of do something small for it. Like we got a tree, some decorations. We're going to light it up soon. And uh, I don't know. It's just going to be fun. I have no idea, honestly. Um, now, when you ask me about top three foods and drinks, I'm a big, like, um, carb guy, I guess. I love carbs. I am I like salty types of carbs, like, you know, the borecas. I don't know if you know that. That's very common here. But... Um, 
stuff like that, sambusak also falls into that category. Uh, a lot of the um, Georgian food falls into that category. Um, I like sweets, obviously, and sweet carbs, like dough-based stuff, but I, I'm more of a salt kind of person. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm really weird. Like, I like tuna salad a lot. I definitely say in the past it's in my top three foods for some reason. Like, just tuna mayo, um, pickles in it. You can put, like, green onion, uh, some mustard if you want to. Nutritional yeast works well on everything. So that's really off topic. Um, Dave says, kuretake or white knights? I've never tried kuretake. Kuretake, I should say, like, real Japanese. Um accent uh, i did try white knights and i love them so i'm all for white knights i think they're great they're cheap they're good quality very high quality very good paint uh and carney garcia hi they run from espania <laughs> so hi uh, my friend thank you for joining uh jam lee says i love the notion of controlling the chaos to the degree that you can uh, begin producing uh, outcomes that are a little... Oh, yeah, to the degree that you can. Uh, begin producing outcomes that are a little artworks that people can recognize and appreciate, definitely. I think one of the greatest marks of a skilled watercolorist is the ability to get a lot of freedom, but you also... Your control is visible. You didn't just splatter some paint on the, on the paper, which can work and can be... It's definitely art but you also demonstrate some level of control. And it's very subtle. The control is very subtle. Um, so Dave says, Tio is a great one uh, at Urban Sketching, definitely. Um, Gloria Mar Wilson, I have budget restrictions since I'm not working, thus paper is my greatest issue. Can you recommend a medium grade paper decent enough to practice? Um, I like the Cotman uh, Montval. Um, I have a couple of sketchbooks here, let me show you. It's sketchbooks, but you can get this basically the same thing for like, I guess, uh, let's see, here we go. the same thing in, um, in a roll or something like that. So this one I like, uh, it's fairly cheap. Um, watercolor is the biggest, uh, watercolor paper is the biggest issue when it comes to quality. Um, what I would say is if you can like make a big purchase of a roll, like a 10 yard roll, it will be expensive, but it's much cheaper per square, whatever. So like I got an, an Arsh roll. Um, I, I've been using it, I think for almost a year now. And it's not, it didn't, I didn't finish, uh, finish it by now. And I think it cost me around 200, $250 USD. Um, that's a really good one if you can get like one time purchase and then you cut it because basically you pay for the work of cutting it, putting it in pads and so on. If you buy it in pads or, or, or even in sheets, you pay for that action of cutting the sheets. When you buy the roll, it's a bit of a, an extra work. You have to roll it out. It's extremely like curved. So you have to stretch it hard and then cut it. It's, it's a bit of work, but it's much more economic. That's what I do at least. I'm going to, as always, get hot here when I live stream. So, uh, yeah, I hope that helps, uh, Glorimar. Uh, let me know. Calvin says, I hope I'll get the courage to do plein air painting. I don't even show my paintings to my family. That's funny because that's exactly the next topic on my agenda. I swear, I'm going to show you. It's so funny that you said plein air. So, see here. Figure it out. Plein air. Okay, so plein air. Let's get to it, and then I'll continue addressing some chat questions. Plein air is huge for... Um, for improving on the long run. Because here's the thing, when you work inside a studio, and that's, that's really, that really is the next tip I was gonna give you. If you wanna improve with watercolor over the long run, plein air is key. Because what it does is, when you're working inside, you're, you're bound by so many different aspects, which creates kind of an artificial environment, in my opinion. You're painting from a photo, most of the time. Maybe you have a still life arrangement, which is great, but most of the time, if I'm being honest with myself and with most of the people I, I talk to, it's photos. So you're painting from a photo. Most of the time, it's not even physical, printed out. It's on your screen. So that's a few layers of removal from the subject. Um, you're working on a desk in a very artificial environment, artificial light. There are all of these factors that 
in my opinion, in a way, detract from the immersion in the process. Now, when you do plein air, there's basically nothing between you and the reference. You're out there looking at it directly. Um, and what this does is it, it, it makes you see things differently. You may notice that you can recognize more colors, that you can pay attention and notice more variations in value. You're, you may be confused by it because you're seeing all of these things that are not framed neatly like very often happens with photos. So I'm going to switch to a mid, mid-tier sweater here. One moment. Um, you don't have clear borders. That's my other sweater that people ask me about with the U.S. flag. So I got it at a vintage store for like nothing <laughs> when I was in New York. So um, there, you're, you're, you don't have a, a natural kind of nice framing that someone prepared in advance or you prepared when you took the picture. Uh, which is better than using other people's pictures, but still. Um, so you may be confused by it, but you are more there in a way. I hope that makes sense. And what this does is both give you some more uh, visual cues and also like hearing. You can hear the sound of the cars. You get the environment. You you have more food for thought when it comes to the atmosphere of the of the painting. Um, and if you want to convey that. So, for example, looking at a picture of a street, you may not realize just how uh, noisy it is. So then you would want to show more cars. You'd want to show more things. Maybe you're standing there in the street corner and then you smell like a really, really good smell. And then you look around, you see a bakery. And then you're like, oh, I want to paint this. So and then you figure it out. Maybe you use warm colors to convey the, the color of dough, which is kind of you know, brownish gold. All of these things, you get extra cues for how to paint. And on the other hand, a lot of the kind of barriers between you and the reference are gone. They get, they're completely gone. Um, it's just cleaner in a way. And I do think it's a good way of practicing. And you don't have to do it all the time. There are a lot of limitations to it. Um, I do think that it's really good to spice it up at least once a week. I don't I do not hold myself to that standard at the moment. I did before, and it's gonna come. It's gonna, like, a time period is gonna come when I'll spend much more time doing planner. I love it, I love it, I don't care. Like, people walk by, they look at it, they comment, I love that, I don't mind that at all. In the beginning, I really loved it because it's like attention, so you feel really good about it. At least that's how it was for me. And then after I got used to it, it was more of an annoyance in, in the fact that it would usually happen when the painting is already taking shape and I have to really focus. Like the first washes, you can kind of go like that. But then in the real subtle areas, in the tougher washes, if someone's talking to you, that can be a distraction. One more thing I will say is that it's really hard to draw accurately outside because you have to interpret three-dimensional objects. It's a little harder to notice the perspective as opposed to a photo, which is very clear sometimes. Um, so I will say planner is really, really, really big. That's kind of a quick, fun tip for you. And it's a very dumb advice in a way because it doesn't require you to do anything but go outside. I know there's a hassle involved. Right now it's problem. It's a problem with the COVID. But um, what you have to, to realize is that it's like, it's such a dumb advice in the way of you just have to pick your stuff, go outside and paint outside. You can even look out the window. That's even one step better. You don't have to do something differently in terms of technique. You don't have to think about the colors you use. Think about the values. I don't ask you to do any of that. Just paint outside once or twice, see how it works. I know a lot of people have tried it out and it really worked well for them. Um, so that's the plan air advice. So thank you so much, Kelvin, for helping me make that transition. Uh, John says, thank you. Kelvin says, Tim Wilmot might be a good uh, guess. Yeah, Tim Wilmot uh, is great. He is wonderful. Um, Jem Lee says, I would definitely tune into an art chat. Kimberly uh, says, I would love to be included in a creative conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I could definitely bring uh, some people here on. Uh, we'll see about that. By the way, 99 people I see here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to anyone who joined. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. It really helps it reach more people. Um, and I really do appreciate that. Cubs Win says, Art Conversations, Brandon Schaefer. I uh, love watching him too. So yeah, I know I th I've seen Brandon's stuff. Um, I'll, I'll have to... So here, this is going to be my note paper. I'm going to write down some notes here. Uh, so we have Tim. Well, I'm just writing everything down. Otherwise, I'll definitely forget. 
Brandon Schaefer. Uh, yeah, okay, the chat jumps, which is always fun. <laughs> Adam Sandler, that's funny. Uh, okay, let's see, I kind of lost it. Uh, da, 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 da. Instead of uh, one day of presents, you got eight crazy nights. Adam Sandler. Okay, <laughs> I know, I get it. Yeah, with Hanukkah. Uh, Cubs win says art conversation. Brandon Schaefer got it. That's the one I was looking for. Schaefer. Um, Kelvin says Tio. Yeah, definitely Tio. I'm gonna write that down. People who already speak to a camera will be a good idea. Uh, Razil, hello. I've been away for a while, but I was curious if you've seen my drawings. Uh, P.S. Thank you for your work. It has uh, re-inspired me to complete my paintings I've been working on for over three years. That's amazing, Razil. Uh, send me another email if it's email. Uh, I may have missed it. I do think I replied to almost everything in my inbox, but do send it again. I'll try it, uh, answering. Uh, Martine McFarland says, hi from Scotland. Zaid says, hi Leron, how do you know the pigment to water ratio after the first wash? If we use the same amount of water, the painting becomes muddy, while if we use not enough, it gets opaque too fast. Um, let's see, how do you know uh, the pigment to water ratio after the first wash? If we use the same amount of water, the painting becomes muddy, while if we use... Uh, I'm not sure about using the same amount turning the painting muddy. Uh, and that has to do more with colors. So if you glaze two colors that are different uh, one over the other, you'll get that, you know, stained glass effect because you see through it. Um, so if you glaze yellow over yellow, it won't get uh, muddy for the most part. It won't go brown. Um, if you use yellow and then red and then blue, yes, it will. Uh, opaque too fast, yeah. So it really depends on how do you want to express your reference photo. If you want to be true to the reference, you'll go as dark as you need to and even opaque in the second wash. But if you want to add your own kind of interpretation on it, which I like to do. So like if you look at this black on my shirt, it's, it's almost perfect black right here. But I sometimes like to make it lighter. One reason was because in the past I used to go extremely exaggerated with the darks and that's something I'm still working on changing so I'll go too light sometimes or I'll purposely turn the painting into a higher key um, to go for a different feeling um, so it really will depend on that I don't think I personally don't have a problem with the painting getting too opaque too fast um, that's a good question that's a good question it's something I need to explore more like how glazes work with different levels of opacity. Um, I don't care about opacity as much as long as the final result is something I enjoy, but I do get that. Very, very Many artists get that very nice transparent look that glows a little more. I get that because you see the paper through it. That's also a question of value, generally speaking. If you go higher, um, lighter value, even with more opaque paint, you'll still get that glow. I hope that makes sense. So for example, yellow ochre is quite opaque, but if you go light on it, you'll still get the paper to glow. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, struggle with smaller workspace versus using large paper. Seems my paint flow is so limited and more restricted. Yeah, for that, <clears throat> use larger brushes, mix more paint in advance, have the paper at a stronger angle. So if you usually paint like this, go like this to get the paint to move. And the biggest tip is larger brush, larger, much larger brush if you can, um, and mix more water, more paint. It is a challenge. I will make a video on it at some point. It is a big challenge painting larger. Um, Dave says, can't wait to get out planner again. Definitely, uh, I get it. And UK has such beautiful views, cityscapes, landscapes. Uh, uh, Gigi Benia, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Good morning from Montreal. I have to go to work, hope to find this video tonight. Thanks a lot and enjoy everyone. Yeah, definitely, I hope you'll watch it. Uh, John, Liron, I have tried to find information on how to use scale in my drawings, but I can't find anything on YouTube. Is this something you might cover in the future? Thank you. Um, what do you mean by scale? Let me know, I'm not sure I follow. Scale, is it's probably something I'm not familiar with, or it's a typo, we'll see. Um, let me know, clarify. Gloria Mar Wilson, uh, TYVM, that is great. I can really do that. Got my white knights watercolor today and Princeton brushes. I want to thank you for all the 
Uh, lives and tutorials, you're the best. Gracias. Thank you so much. Uh, Nier says, I just started to try painting without ink. It's so hard to keep the pencil visible in one hand and not too aggressive and dark on the other. Yeah, that's a tight rope to walk. Um, I guess it's just about experimenting with different, um, you know, um, grades of pencil, like uh, the, the B scale, H scale. B is dark, but it, get, it gets washed off. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Stephanie Chandler, hello from Western Australia. Rayman, when you paint plan air in Israel, how do you cope with the heat fast drying watercolor paint? Uh, I paint in the shade always. One time I painted in direct sunlight, it was a nightmare and I felt like I'm gonna faint afterwards. I had to like take a break and drink water. Uh, that, was, that wasn't smart. Um, but for the most part, I'll find a shaded spot and the light moves, so it's tricky. You have to know the, the area you're painting. Um, and it does take more, you know, more work and more water to get the paint to continue flowing. It's definitely an issue. Um, paint dries really fast. It just even if you're not in direct sunlight, just the uh, reflected light and all of that, it dries really fast. Um, so I just make sure to have, I have, when I paint outside, the paper is in that kind of an angle. It's really steep. For the first washes, at least, it's very steep. Maybe sometimes like this, but when I paint inside, it's like, I hope you can see it properly. It's like this, and then outside, it's much more steep, much steeper. Um, that's the best way I found more water. Um, and uh, there was one more thing. Yeah, of course, this thing saves me on plein airs. I keep using the sprayer just to go to keep it wet all the time, all the time. It's a big challenge. Uh, but what you do want to look at, it, look at is the positive side of that, uh, and that is you don't have to wait between washes almost at all. I finished the painting, I put it in direct sunlight, two minutes and it's dry. So that's a really good, and not only dry, it's flat, like the paint, the paper flats, flattens completely. So that's the plus. I, I know that I can squeeze a really long uh, painting session because of that. I hope it makes sense. Uh, if it's a complex painting that takes long, that's fine, but the drying time is non-existent, really. Uh, John says, love all your planner videos, can't wait to see more in the future. Yeah, definitely, I know a lot of people enjoy these, and I they're my favorites. My planner videos are probably among my favorite videos by myself, uh, so I hope to do more. Casual Bridger says, hello from Croatia, I'm currently on online class. Okay, so you can... Um, uh, you can basically watch this and that at the same time. That's funny. Daiji Shinomori just wanted to say hi. I came in a little late. No worries, my friend. Uh, Nor says thank you so much. You got it. Uh, Sosafro, highly run. I am new on watercolor painting and get frustrated when blending colors and the water ratio. I get hard edges and cauliflower effects. Any thoughts? Thanks. Uh, so kind of the same tips. Work at an angle so that the paint keeps moving. Uh, the thing with cauliflowers is when the paper is flat you'll get uneven patches that dry differently because the paint pulls. But once you put it at an angle, it all flows down and it pulls at the, you know, you get a bead and then you continue moving that bead along. So that's the best uh, tip I can give you for that. Use more water if necessary. Use this thing to keep things wet. And I will say this. Here's kind of a left field answer for you. Cauliflowers are very often inevitable. You will get them, especially in larger washes and complex washes. So Knowing that you will get them, first recognize that they can be beautiful sometimes. So many of my paintings, you know, paintings that I love, that turned out great, that I sold, uh, have cauliflowers in the first wash, and one, it's barely noticeable, or two, it looks good in the grand scheme of things. So as long as it's not like a really strong dark wash with big cauliflowers, doesn't really matter. So just a perspective for you. Don't be too scared of that boogeyman kind of a thing. Um, cauliflowers, they can be used to your advantage too, but that's a little more advanced. advanced. Um, so just wanted to say that. Uh, I hope that perspective uh, helps you in a way. Uh, and thank you for the great, great question. Um, I do talk about it in my course and I have a video on it, like getting an even wash. You may want to check that out. One more thing, paint smaller, use a larger brush, makes it a little easier. Stephanie Corral, buenos dias. Do you consider yourself a realist? Do you have a goal for next year for your art? Um, realist, I don't know, not really, because the, the label itself doesn't say much to me, so I guess I don't. Um, is it like aspiring to create realism in your art? Uh, I don't think so. No, I'm not that. Or at least I've 
coconut uh, coconut uh, cream in here, so it's really good. Um, I'm not. Um, that's not the full definition of me. So it'll be maybe that alongside other things. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now, art goals uh, for next year. Um, <clears throat> one thing would be to work on colors. That's my weakness. Um, I've been focused so much on values. I'm actually going to write it down for myself because it's going to be big. Um, I've been focusing so much on values that uh, I feel like I don't have enough control on getting the colors to glow as much as I want uh, and to be loyal to the source. So in a way, that's more of a realism thing. Um, colors, producing more live content. Um, if you can consider that part of art as an art goal. Um, what else? Let me just put my phone here. I need to pay attention to some messages. Um, uh, what else would it be like? I'll, I'll prepare them. I'll write everything down, and I, I still need to brainstorm some of these things. I do know that a lot of the, that I do want to, as always, improve my skills. That's really important. Maybe more collaborations around art, like I said. Um, I will make like a podcast episode and a video maybe at the start of 2021, and I'll talk about these things. I still need to brainstorm them. They're still half baked, uh, in a way. Uh, uh, but thank you for the questions. Um, they're really good. Jay Nathan, get Jim Bowden on for an art chat. Noted. Um, I'm familiar with Jim. Great artist. Um, Mark Tara Holmes, review, please. Uh, Zayed, I actually have a video. Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know. I don't have one yet. Yeah, I know. He's on my short list. It's going to be soon. Um, I did write Mark down. Um I'll definitely do a painting masters on him soon. Okay, I promise. Uh, Chris and good painting brushes. Always there are videos of brushes for beginners, but I would like to know more about good brushes. Um, for me, that will be a Skoda is like a no-brainer. Um, Tracy Levinson's brushes. I've been really enjoying these. Uh, very good for uh, ergonomically because they're you see the uneven structure. That's really important. Uh, I need to do a proper one, but I, I will link down below, and I'll also probably share it in the chat now. These brushes are great. Um, I'm going to share them now uh, in the chat. Oh, brushes. I'm going to share a link to the website where you can get them. You can use a coupon code. I believe it still works. Uh, Liron, L-I-R-O-N, uh, not cap sensitive, so you can just write it. Uh, I'm going to write it in the chat. You definitely want to check these out. They're good. Uh, for cheaper ones, um, generally speaking, silver, black, velvet work really well for me. So just another thought out there. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, Kelvin says, hard edges means too much water. Cauliflower means the layer haven't dried yet. Uh, color blending is just about speed. Paint something and then clear your brass ASAP and blend the color out. Yeah, and I will give another tip. Um, if you find yourself constantly needing to clean your brush, pick up a different paint, clean your brush, blend edges, use two brushes. That was huge for me. When I saw Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolor do this for the first time, I was like, whoa, mind blown. You can use more than one brush. So paint with this, do most of the wash. And then when you need to blend edges, don't clean this one, use this one. And then you can keep this one always clean. I hope that makes sense. Just use two brushes. That's like a huge moment for me. Um, Miranda sends a smiley. Thank you so much. Uh, Zaid says, thanks for suggesting the D James Gurney video last week. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, he's great. He's really good. Uh, Sujanith says, hi, hi, my friend. How are you? Uh, Louis Burgess, have to go very late here. Enjoy. I uh, hope I can see this later. Definitely. Armin, um, Armin Preet Brar. Hi, uh, I'm from India. Uh, La W. La W. Hi, Leron and everyone in the chat. Do you recommend someone interested in watercolor or learn how to draw? If so, how in depth? Okay, good. So that's another tip I have for you, and I wrote it down. Uh, I'm gonna cross out the things we talked about. So uh, drawing. Where did I write that down? Work on drawing. Yeah. Okay. So to address the topic of drawing real quick, because you're asking about it. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I think it's really important. Uh, and I had an, an email recently uh, by someone I think who was also in the in the live stream. Uh, asking about it. So here's the thing. Don't let lack of drawing skills and experience stop you from painting. If you enjoy watercolor, do it. Paint. Don't like think of it as a, I first have to do this and then I can do that. No. Paint as much as you want. Do whatever it takes to be accurate. Use the grid method. Trace. 
if you look at drawing as kind of a means to the end, which is painting. With that, if you truly want to master the whole process, I cannot recommend enough um, um, learning how to draw properly and accurately and from observation because it will make your painting so much better. One of the things I did learn, and I, um, I will show you this in the next Painting Masters episode, uh, is how very basic um, paint can still do the trick if the drawing is accurate. You don't need much. And I heard, I think I heard Joseph Z says, say, Joseph Zbukovic say, says that, uh, saying that, he said, uh, you can't mess up a really good drawing too bad. So if you can draw properly, your um, painting will turn out really nice. So that's my take on it. Don't let it stop you from painting if that's the, your real true passion. But if you're like me and you want to master the whole process and you don't want to be dependent on methods like uh, the grid or tracing, uh, if you want to do plan air and you want to have that freedom, if you want to learn how to draw more accurately like the tough subjects like people, portraits, incredibly hard, uh, anatomy, figure drawing, all of that, you can only benefit from it. So that's my take on drawing. I hope that makes sense. Um, how in depth, now that's a different question. So it will depend on, again, your desired result. For me, that's as in-depth as possible. I want to learn how to draw carefully from observation, which has been a staple of what I teach. But also, I want to understand better, like three-dimensionality and perspective. Um, I think these two work really well together. So I'll practice drawing basic cylinders and understanding why the folds in the cloth look like this, why they're created that way, why they're created near the elbow, for example, like here. Um, I will try and understand the physics of it, quote unquote. That's me. Um, it can only help. It won't hurt it. But don't let that stop you from painting. So just my two cents. Uh, La W, another one, suggested chats with uh, Mark Yanai. Oh, he's he's amazing. David Lovenberg, Stan Miller, Mario Robinson, Dean Mitchell, Udis Correa, or Perful, so on. So I'm going to take a screen capture of this instead of writing down all these names. Uh, so I'll have it for later. Um, I'm going to write it down, screen, screen cap. Uh, okay, yeah, definitely. Great suggestions. Thank you so much. Dave Lowe says, do you ever use uh, the Hacke brush, Liron? I've never seen you use one. Great for loosening up, which is what I struggled with for many years. Uh, I don't. I have this kind of a similar thing. Uh, I don't know if you'd call that a Hacke brush. I don't think so, uh, this one. So that's a very freeing, a loose uh, brush. Uh, I find that I'm, I'm having an easy time loosening up, so I don't really need it at the moment as much. But that's a great tip, by the way, for other people here. Uh, use that. That's a really good one. Um, let's read a few more chats, and then I'll go over the next topic. And obviously, this live stream is going to be longer than uh, I hope for, for sure. But we'll try squeezing in most of the tips. Um, uh, Kimberly Hilton Studio. I love plein air painting. I feel like my paintings look so much better uh, when I can see the subjects in real life, the elements, bugs, and ever-changing light is challenging. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I will talk about it uh, in the future. Stephanie uh, Corell says, I heard the secret to avoid cauliflowers, and it actually works. Your paint brush should never be wetter than the wash. Should never be wet. Yeah, that's true. That's a good guideline. Um, you always want to go from a very wet brush to slightly less and less wet brush. And another thing is there is some point where you just don't want to touch the wash. If it's dried past like 20%, I think, you don't want to touch it anymore because that's what leads to most cauliflowers. Uh, Pepe Gong, hi from Nova Scotia, Canada. Do you always use good paper when paint? Uh, if, you, uh, if not, do you have any suggestions on budget paper? We talked about it. Um, Consume Montval is a good one. Uh, also, any advice on winter plan air? Is it worth it? Thanks. I uh, love your videos. Winter planner sounds awesome. I would love to do that. It's not a question of is it worth it. It's more of a question of would you enjoy it. If you think you'd enjoy it, go for it. Paper, again, that's the that's the hard part. Paper is, good paper is important. I personally always use Arsh or Saunders Waterford. Very rarely will I use Canson Montval or something like that. That's my two, my two cents on that. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. Paper is really, you have to go for quality sometimes. Richard Jennings. Hi, Liron. Very happy to catch you live. I understand that research plays a big part in improving art, but how do you personally take an image that inspires you and learn from it? Um, that's a good question. How do you take an image that inspires you and learn from it? Hmm. 
I would say you can analyze it in terms of different criteria. So you want to look at composition. How are the different shapes arranged and where they are? You want to look at colors. You want to look at values. Turn it black and white, play around with it, figure out why, like what it looks like. You want to look at the shapes. Uh, how does the person who painted it portray people? How do they portray cars, buildings, foliage? Um, there are a lot of things like that that you can gain from many, many different artworks. Just look at the shapes. The shapes are a big one. That's definitely something I would look at. Uh, Kelvin Zero, if you want to play with watercolor, you need to get used to the fact that you'll get mistakes and accidents. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Analyse Fort, hi, fr hi there, the Ron live show, fantastic from Victoria, Aust Austin, I guess. Uh, Taran Agarwal, hi, the Ron, uh, I can't wait uh, can't for the life of me figure out, oh, I can't for the life of me figure out what colors to use as I look at a reference or what colors to have together. Okay, that's, that's actually a good segue to my next tip. So here's my next advice, and I hope it will... Um, answer another struggle is determining the values what colors uh, do these values okay so for um, so here's here's the thing what I want you to do when practicing is don't think about practicing as I'm gonna make a painting what you want to do is practice a specific skill this specificity is what's responsible to growth and it's something I talked about a lot and you may have picked up on in previous videos but here's the thing have a goal for every practice session and I don't mean when you're outside or you just want to paint and enjoy yourself. That's fine. Do that like pure creative sessions. But when you practice, have a certain goal. So for me, for every painting I do while practicing, there is a specific goal. It could be to work on values. And then I'll do a value matching exercise. So you say you don't you struggle with getting the values right. Do a specific exercise on that. How can you do that? Look at the picture. Paint on the paper. Take a picture of what you painted or scan it in. Turn it black and white and compare it to the picture, which is also in black and white, and see how close you were. Is it too light? Is it too dark? Do that multiple times. You can also do that with a full painting. My advice would actually be to paint from black and white in black and white. And then you can really compare and see, oh, I went too dark here, too light there. Do this multiple times and you will find your patterns. You will find the common mistakes you make. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, specificity is key. Uh, it's really important. Practice the individual skills every time. If your weak point is drawing, do a couple of drawings. Just that. Don't even take it to the next step of painting because you're getting more um, effective. You, you gain more per time spent practicing by doing that because it compounds. You work on drawing a few things and because you're so focused on that, you're in that mindset, you will make great, a greater dent in your drawing skills. Okay? Um, if you if you're really weak with composition, practice a couple of um, abstract compositions. Draw a square for a paper and then divide it in with a line, with another line, with another line. Do many of these and, and then take a few steps back and look at them and ask yourself which one of these looks the best to me. And you'll notice certain things that repeat. Like you like maybe you like thirds, so you like to place your focal point where the thirds are. And, and this is really simple. Let me show you what I mean just for a moment. I'm going to rotate to my desk. So, for example, you just do this, many of these scenes, and you kind of go, I'm going to divide it here. And then I'm going to divide it here. And then I'm going to do this thing. And then I'm going to do this thing. Like, really, like a, like a child would do. And then do a different one, go like that. And then go like this. And, and look at this. Like, what can you learn from this? This has much more movement in it. Diagonals tend to have that. Okay? This is a little more solid, a little more kind of um, anchored. See what I mean? Uh, it doesn't even matter what we're looking at. This is abstract compositions. So do this, fill in entire pages of just like try going to tall, like go like this. Line, another line, another line, another line. Figure it out, okay? Practice one skill at a time. That's huge, I cannot stress that enough. Um, I really recommend doing that. That's my, my fourth tip I wanted to share with you. Um, fourth or is it third the third one actually practice one skill at a time it's huge for you practice even washes like a technique place the paper at an angle and practice just getting an even wash okay and that's how you figure out how to match colors so you say you struggle with colors do a full page of just matching colors I have a video on that color matching exercise and I got pretty close to many of the colors there uh, so that's definitely something you want to uh, pay attention to okay um, 
Uh -huh. So yeah, that practice one individual skill at a time. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Margo Ka, greetings from London, UK. Uh, Dave Lowe says, uh, yes, thicker paint can avoid cauliflowers, ink lack consistency, indeed. Zine, my friend, uh, how are you? Kel say, hi everyone, good to see you. I'm watching during a huge snowstorm here in the US, cool. Uh, Monica and Jay, good morning, lots of snow by me. Uh, good to see your, uh, you live XOXO, thank you so much, Monica. Zaid says, what do you feel about sketching from Google Earth? That's great, that works well. Um, I honestly think that's a great alternative to going outside. Um, I encourage it. I think you can pick pr pick your scene, have it perfect, like, um, you know, good composition, move it around as much as you want. It's really good. Henny Shah, any advice on painting on site when by yourself, specifically the safety aspect? Uh, that's a good question. Obviously, you need to be careful, like, depending on where you go. That's beyond the artistic uh, aspect of it. I like to paint, you know, obviously during daytime. Uh, and in places with lots of people. Um, now, if you're talking about safety, like the paper flying away or stuff like that, bring with you a lot of these, like bulldog clips, to tie everything together. It's really important to do that because things fly, like windy places. Um, it really, it really is a problem. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just my thought on that. Um, other than that, like safety aspect, I don't know, it's interesting, like be careful, obviously, you don't want to go next to close to cliffs and stuff like that. You want to be careful in that regard. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Gloria Mar Wilson, watercolor painting saves the day. You got Mr. Watercolor Minder, love that video. You two are my favorites. Yeah, I love that person. I love that uh, that person, that video. Um, I wanted to ask um, about what specific video it is. I don't think I watched it, you know what? Now that you say, is it a new video of Steve? I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, Dushan B, hi, your work really inspires me. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, we're getting close to uh, the end of this live stream. I'm going to try wrapping things up nicely. I'm going to go over all messages, then address the other topics real quick. Um, Kelvin Zero, I just use Jackson Art Squirrel Mop Brush. Good quality, natural hair, big and cheap. Yeah, uh, um, mop brushes in general, I really like them. Um, I think they work really well. Uh, for just getting large washes first, uh, like first wash is perfect for that. Uh, John says we'll have to go now. Would like to wish you, may Ruth, a happy Hanukkah and Christmas. Thank you. We'll catch you uh, next week's live. Thank you so much, John. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take it. F I can either stop the live now or I can check something on my phone and then continue. So let me just check it one moment and I'll be back with you. You'll you'll see me. You just won't hear me. Okay, <laughs> we'll continue. Sorry about that dead air. Probably lost a couple of viewers, but I didn't want to compromise the entirety of the live. So we're going to go for about 20 more minutes. My bad for the time constraint today is a little different. Um, but anyway, let's get through. We'll get through it. Um, Kelvin says, a Laurel Hart, a watercolor master that I admire. Apparently, she traced all of her drawings because she's a painter, not a sketcher. I love Laurel Hart's work. Uh, so yeah, here you go, example. Uh, and by the way, thank you so much. So many people stayed. Thank you so much for surviving that dead air. Natalie Kelly, highly wrong. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Vespa for Jen, love the demo of sketching, uh, then painting Milan Cathedral. Thank you so much. The scale of the people. Yes, that was the main part there. Calvin Zero, winter plein air. So how do you keep your watercolor from freezing? Yeah, that's a problem. Um, I don't know if watercolor, but fingers. I, I did uh, like a few plein air sketches. Uh, and it was really tough, like on the fingers. So you have to be careful, like have gloves and everything. Uh, but I don't have much experience like with watercolor in winter. Um, so sorry about that. We're unlucky to don't, not have this winter here, this strong of a winter here. 
Uh, Love Storm, Café du... Okay, I'm going to skip a couple of... Uh, okay, let's do this. I'm going to go over my points, then address the chat, and then we'll wrap it up. I do have a couple of points to go through. Hopefully, they'll answer some questions. Uh, and we can just continue doing a similar live next week, the week after, okay? We have all, all the time in the world. Um, so let's do that. <laughs> so just turn my phone into silent mode. So, reference photos. I'm going to go through these quickly, no fluff, no need to... Uh, talk too much about each of these. It's very simple tips. Start with easy references. Paint simple things. Simple shapes, clear shapes, um, sharp photos. Don't go for blurry, bad reference photos. Uh, things that uh, make you want to paint them are always good. That's It's an option. You don't have to, but things that make you want to paint them and inspire you, go for that all day long. Like That's the best thing. Uh, black and white works really well or monochrome. Uh, photos, that's the best. It's just easier to see the shapes, to see the values. Check out Stan Miller's tutorials um, here on YouTube. He's great at that, uh, showing uh, painting from simple reference photos. That's huge, okay? So that's one of the key advice I can give you because ultimately, if you're going to try only painting exclusively very tough reference photos, you'll get discouraged. It's natural that you'll mess them up, okay? Now, I, I was kind of crazy. I went for the hardest things beginning because I had a bit of, uh, um, not an ego, but a belief because I had experience with sketching. I was like, okay, it's just the same only with paint. No, it's different. So um, I started with very tough references. Then slowly I went for humble or uh, humbler reference photos. And now I'm kind of cranking it up again, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but it's no shame to work on simple stuff. And even a complex subject like face can become much easier if you paint black and white. Um, or monochrome using uh, images that are just purely black and white or like gray uh, photos. So that's a huge one. I really recommend that. Go over Pixabay, Wet Canvas, um, Photo Library. Any of these sources will work. Filter, find the black and white pictures, start with those. They're, those are the best. Uh, it's just a better way of keeping yourself motivated, I think. Um, that way you just gain a momentum of painting and getting things to look the way you want. Okay, I hope that makes sense. By the way, here's an idea. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go over all of the chat messages basically from this point on, so which is about from 4, uh, 4.51 onwards. And I'm just going to address them in a video, okay? Because I don't think we'll have enough time for all of them. I'm going to address any question here uh, that wasn't answered in a, in a non-live video, okay? So ask away. Uh, we'll do a questions and answers video for next week, okay? That's, I think that's just the most efficient way to solve this. Uh, so feel free to ask away. Again, I'll answer everything uh, because I do want to, to do that. Um, just a little short on time. To, and you can see me kind of like going, yes, I want to continue. I really enjoy it, but logistically I have to do something else. So sorry about that. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, so that's another tip for you. We'll conclude, by the way, I'll go over everything near the end because I do want to make sure you remember everything. Now, another big one for you is to keep every painting you make. And I'm going to use this opportunity to bring a few paintings in here and show you. You really want to keep and preserve every painting you make because they will help you in so many ways. First, it's memories. It's something you want to have uh, accessible. You will recognize patterns of the things you do well or you need improvement with. You will learn. I'm just going to flip through some of these. Maybe it'll be better with this camera. I'm not sure. Let's try it out. So uh, I'm not sure where the quality is better. I'll go with the table for now uh, just because it's more comfortable and more convenient. So you see, uh, just keeping all of the old paintings will really help you. It will motivate you. You will see the long way you came and the things you learned, I think, which I think is uh, really important. Okay, And you will be able to recognize some trends and things you used to do better and maybe you got worse at or you, you're not as good at. Like I used to go very exaggerated on the colors and I didn't know how to tie them all together. Uh, and when I started using a minimal palette, it really helped me. So this is a good example of that. Uh, here, I wasn't sure what the composition is going to be like, so uh, didn't go dark enough here, should have been a little darker, not clear enough of a message, like so many things to improve. This one, actually, I believe I show in a YouTube video, at least the sketch, look at the, the date here, 2016, 
15th of July 2016. Uh, uh, yeah, 2016. So that's really cool. Um, look at this one. The green is horrifying here. This is horrid. Just pure green has nothing to do with the other colors here. So you see, I learned a lot during the, the last couple of years. This is a good one. This one I actually like. I painted plein air, uh, I think. I had a really good time. I can tell what paintings I did plein air, and I believe that one was. Uh, good clear message. I think I like these different brush marks. Um, so yeah, really nice. Uh, so that's, I think, the, like the really important one. Just keep whatever you make, keep it. Don't throw anything away. This one from a YouTube tutorial, you probably recognize. This one, I have no idea what I was trying to do here. Just a big mess. Is there anything on the other side? No. You see, it's just a really good uh, thing to have at hand. Uh, let me uh, see. The next thing I wanted to share with you is to never give up on a painting. So if you're stuck in the middle of a process and you feel like it's doomed, it's gone, I would urge you to continue. The reason I say this is there are a lot of lessons to be gained from pretty much any painting you make. Um, and when you stop, you give up on that. And one more thing I didn't mention a lot in the past, and it is important, is when you quit, you run the risk of starting a quitting habit. Because if you quit this painting that you dislike, what stops you from always, like if it's not perfect, deciding to quit? So you never know how far you can take it and how far you can come back and improve things. So as long as there's still something on paper and it's not all just black, you can still work with it. And you can work with white opaque paint over black. Like I know it's, it's a very extreme example, but hopefully uh, that makes sense to you. Uh, I think the moment I really forced myself in a way to push through uh, painting processes that I felt like I was failing at, I would say I started improving like double the rate. This is huge. This is really huge. I cannot stress this one enough. Um, so that's that. Look at the people here. It's so weird. It's just stick figures. Um, so yeah. Now, the next thing I want to say is like get inspired by other people's works. Um, and, and I want to tie that with the notion of style. A lot of people think to themselves, and I'm just going to scroll through these paintings here to show you my really old and unsuccessful in a way paintings because I, I really it's important for me to show you this was actually a tutorial on youtube i love this one i love how it turned out actually good colors good uh edges here i really like this one um but i love the light and shadow here too uh, but in any case um i think observing other people's paintings and figuring out which ones you love is a good hint to towards what you will ultimately love creating it's not linear and it's not like perfect. It's not like, okay, this type of art, so I'm going to make the same thing. Not at all. It's more about, it gives you a hint of something you like. So maybe you like how someone interprets shapes. Maybe you like how someone interprets light and shadow and values. Maybe you enjoy, this is crazy. Look at this. Maybe you really enjoy how someone does their colors. It's a hint, nothing more than that, but use it to your advantage, to figure out what you enjoy. Look at all different artists that you really like their works and use that again to figure out some aspects of how you like doing things, okay? It's not a perfect advice, but it is uh, another way to go at it. This is from Alvaro Castanet's uh, DVD, by the way. Uh, he taught how to paint this scene and I did it based on his. So it's a secondhand impression, basically. Uh, so that's that. Uh, now, persistence. That's the last advice I have for you. Um, one thing that's really important is if you can persistently paint over the long run, let me switch like this. If you can persistently practice painting, you will improve for sure. And most of the people that fail, fail, uh, is just people who quit at some point. That's it's, uh, I can't stress this point enough. Like the YouTube channel, the growth here, the growth on Instagram, all the growth I had everywhere, which isn't like super fast, but it's good. It's decent. All of these things, had I stopped at some point, I wouldn't get there. I wouldn't be able to, to get here to where I am and do anything of the things I'm doing here. By the way, look at this. Two attempts at this scene. I think uh, I've shown you this in multiple videos, by the way. Um, so a huge part of it is just the persistence over the long haul. Most of the problems you have will cure themselves naturally by practicing and figuring things out. 
Uh, and if you feel like you're stuck, I know what it feels like to be frustrated and feel like you'll never break out of it. But trust me, you will. You will. The problem is most of the time when people feel discouraged, they also let it influence how much they're practicing. So slowly you start practicing less and then whoop de doo <laughs> surprise, surprise, it has real life consequences where you stop growing. So I really see this with upcoming artists. I see the people who practice a lot and who do a lot of different paintings. They just post more and more and more and more and they paint every day. They improve. You can tell. And mostly the people that don't, don't practice enough. And it's really as simple. Or maybe there's like a psychological issue of judging yourself too harshly, which prevents you from doing. But it really is as dumb as that. You just have to paint every single day. It really is. When I did this one, for example, this Japanese lamp, I was sure it's like my best work so far. And it is great, but I mean, I have, I have much better works, I think, today. And if you contrast this sharpness with the softness in the background, that was one thing that I think I cracked for the first time with this painting. And my background was just really patchy. You can see all the brush marks. The paper isn't as good, by the way. It's like, a I don't know what it is even. Maybe Fabriano, I don't know. But look at how the patchiness here. And still, I cracked something up, cracked, um, cracked the code for something new. I figured out how to achieve this blended feeling here, as opposed to very sharpness, sharp feeling here. And that was huge for this one, the feeling of focus, okay? Um, so just an example of a pivotal painting for me. And it really does come with lots of attempts. Like, look at this thing. Terrible. I used it later for just scribbly, scrabbly exercise in shapes. Um, now, terrible, that's subjective. I think the cars are actually quite nice. I think the buildings kind of work. Uh, so again, just my two, uh, two cents on that. Um, I do want to apologize that I have to cut this lives a little shorter. Um, I really want to thank you for being here. That's, that's huge, like 131 people at the moment this is from my end. It's amazing. Thank you so, so much. And it's not even like a process. It's just a chat. I want to do more of these chats, many more of them. Honestly, it's the easiest thing for me to do. Like I don't have to paint. There's no pressure in that regard. I can just talk to you. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to move towards wrapping up this live stream now. All of the things you wrote down, all of your questions. And I do see quite a lot of them. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to address them in a Q&A video that's going to be out uh, next week. Uh, because I do want to get to each and every one of you. The goal for me with this kind of a format of live stream is to just better manage my time because I used to spend so much time answering uh, messages. It, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, I agree. <laughs> Terrible is way too harsh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice looking. I know. I'm just, it's always the easiest to be the most self-critical of yourself. And as you say, we are our worst uh, critic, uh, Annelies Ford. That's so true. That's so true. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go over everything. Uh, answer all your questions. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm really enjoying these live streams. I always, uh, when I finish, I'm like, I'm really um, in, in the best mood I can be. Um, thank you so much to anyone who joined once again. Uh, I will, I will, I will uh, wrap it up now. I just, I, I always have to profusely thank you for being here because it's much, much appreciated. And again, this is your chance. Like you have 20, 30 more seconds until I stop babbling. Write your question down below. I will address it. Uh, write your question as a comment. Even after this video is done, write it as a comment. I will get to each and every one of you. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to wrap it up now. Uh, I will talk to you again in the next video. It's going to, Saturday's video is going to be fun too. Uh, Painting Masters episode, you will see. And I will talk to you again also live, hopefully next week. If there are changes, I will let you know. I will catch you again real soon.